and it gives us the tools to actually start making that, those judgments about whether the right person is logged in. And that's, that's net new, as far as I know, at least. Pat, can you make him the presenter? Or do I need yeah. to? I have done. Okay. Well, at the same time, so the ability to split it. Yeah, okay. So consumer identities have the ability to switch for a while. That's a good point. Right, you ready to go? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, my name is Vikas Jain. I'm Director of Product Management at Intel um, for the Identity Products. What I will be talking about is the role of OpenID for identity as a service platforms. And as you see, there are a lot of companies and vendors who are coming up with identity as a service. You know, Peng is there, Intel, Simplified, Okta, and not many. So when organizations and service providers are adopting such services, what are the different things uh, that, or what are the different scenarios where OpenID makes sense? So um, first of all, when we talk about identity as a service, this is an example, Intel Cloud SSO, where you can go and log in once and try to access all the different applications that your business is, has allowed you to access. Right? Or as a service provider, if you take the scenario, how can I make, if I have multiple properties, how do I provide a consistent experience to my customers who can log in once and then access all my properties? Now, I'm, a, I'm not a fan of one size fits all, right? So, when we look at a solution, I look at a target space. And there are different scenarios for different target spaces. For the target market of enterprises, let's look at some of the open ID scenarios. And again, this is not a comprehensive list, and also not a list that Intel product as a disclaimer supports, right? So these are just some of the thoughts and ideas that I want to share with the group here. So one is, before you log in into such an identity as a service, Imagine you have a portal over there where you log in and then get access to all the different applications. How do you first log in into that application? Right? You can have user ID passwords. Nobody likes passwords, as Eric was mentioning. So why not use Google accounts as a way of authenticating and get access into your service? Or another open ID provider. So I term it as front-end authentication into the service, after which then the service takes care of federating and authenticating into the target applications, right? Now, the second scenario is where, imagine if a target application is secured or requires authentication using OpenID. So how do you make your identity as a service portal talk to such an application so that you can allow seamless authentication and single sign-on into such a target. Now, if you go through a normal flow of OpenID into the app, you know, you will be walking through a certain set of redirections versus when you want to do some kind of back-end authentication in this case, how can you do that? And some of the answers you may not have, so I would encourage the OpenID community to try to at least take these as concerns to address. The third one is around street identity. So as identity as a service where we have new users trying to sign up. It could be an enterprise who is opening up applications for its partners or maybe to affiliates or contractors. How can you sign them up and verify their identity because these are not going through your employment check and are there in your uh, active directory, right? So here, imagine you have temporary workers or you have uh, affiliates who want to provide um, access to the application. Street identity could be used as a mechanism of verifying their identity. Now, let's look at some of the use cases for the service provider. And so when I say service provider, it could be an enterprise who is developing an application and wants that application to be secured and authenticated. Or it could be, you, you could be a SaaS application provider who is developing a net new application that you want to take to the market, right? So if you're a SaaS provider these days, 
you don't want to just look at one market, either consumer or the enterprise, right? So you, you look at both the markets because you don't know which one will pick up. You want business from both, right? So in that case, your identity infrastructure should be able to handle both the consumer use cases as well as the enterprise use cases, as well as from all types of devices, right? It could the consumer or the enterprise user could come in from a mobile device or coming in from a laptop or a browser or could have an app. Um, so now if you have to deal with consumers, the number one use case is how do I get more consumers signed for the service. So having some kind of social login integration with account chooser providing easier access and login into your identity as a service from where further you can get access into other applications. Right? So account user could be one integration point for an identity as a service. Another is for the self-registration use case where you want new users to be signed up for your application. So offloading that particular user registration to some identity as a service that can handle how the users get registered either using Yahoo, Google, Facebook, Twitter, what, you know, all the other use cases. Right? So OpenID Connect can provide such a functionality. And then finally, if you have enterprises who are adopting OpenID and becoming an OpenID provider themselves instead of just you know being a SAML provider. So if enterprises start to do that, how as a identity as a service provider you interact, authenticate with such an enterprise OpenID provider and further provide access into a target service application. So as a service provider, you don't want to do all the different scenarios. How about having an identity as a service that takes care of all these different scenarios and many more. This is just something I thought would fit into a, a 10 minute time slot. But as a service provider you want to offload most of it to an identity as a service that caters to the service providers. Okay, those are some of the thoughts uh, that I had and I would, you know, I'd be listening to other thoughts that the group has. Uh, to the scenarios. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Is the team here? So we were to have a presentation from eBay at this time. We probably will hear from them more tomorrow at the OIX meeting. Um, so what I wanted to do with the extra time we have is to open it up to a, a larger discussion. Um, one point, one of several points that I wanted to make was that you've heard in terms of both backplane as well as account chooser, kind of a new development path that OpenID Foundation, where communities or uh, parties of interest outside of the foundation begin to develop uh, uh, some code, a application set, et cetera, and then bring it to the foundation to open source it. We see this as a particularly important and positive development to bring uh, user-centric open source identity technology to a broader uh, community. So we encourage those of you that are involved in similar efforts to consider that similar path and to use the OpenID Foundation platform as a way of uh, open sourcing your, um, your product set. I think as Eric mentioned and um, Brian did as well, one of the benefits of that is by exposing that code and that product set to a broad community, you have the benefit of a worldwide audience all trying to poke holes in what you've uh, come up with. I think we all benefit for that. Are there any general uh, topics or comments that people would like to make?
Sir. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is the right place to talk about this, but um, there are some educational federations like in common that are used for research portals. And a lot of companies, enterprise companies, are not allowed to join those federations because they're not academic or they don't have a long standing contractual in place with some university. But there still are a number of sort of research efforts that are for uh, subscribed content that pay for it, like with IEEE and all types of research that various groups publish. One of the problems that we've seen is we've got hundreds of these research journals that are subscribed to and paid for, and uh, the access methods to restrict who can get to that is IP access list today, you like to get rid of them. Um, but to log into those federations with single sign-on, whether it's SAML or OpenID or whatever the mechanism is, it's, um, oftentimes there will be a web uh, drop-down list that will say what company you're with has problems because one of your competitors will know that you're on that list. This concept of just being able to type in like a wage service of you know, your email, corporate email address, which would then get the right exchanges to get logged in without having to, you know, tell your competitors that you're subscribing to Entrick lead content in this one area on part of my DK or you know, whatever it is. Are there any federations for Well, certainly let other people um, help answer the question. One of the things that uh, will be discussed tomorrow at the OIX meeting is a working group um, that is related to In Common that is looking at a trust framework that um, has policy interoperability between academic institutions, professional societies, and scientific publishing. So I think that's one group that's trying to take a piece of the use case that we're talking about and uh, make some improvements on it. And I know that they're looking at um, account, excuse me, at OpenID Connect as the base case for that uh, protocol. So I think that's one example of uh, federation demand that you're talking about. Any other questions or comments? Terrific. Well, then, let's take the opportunity of ending a bit early. Um, again, I wanted to thank um, all the presenters. And the presenters are representing, and I think as Eric said, not only the companies that they work for, um, but also the community of OpenID Foundation and the broader um, internet community here um, at, the, uh, at the conference. So I invite you to continue this discussion moving from technical interoperability to policy interoperability uh, tomorrow with the Open Identity Exchange meeting um, that will you know, follow a similar course like this, where a series of trust framework working groups will be reporting out their progress on building these trust frameworks um, so that we can look at federation in both the enterprise, academic, and government sector. So I invite you to participate in that discussion. I thank you for your attention uh, to this meeting, and um, please uh, consider contributing to the next Open ID workshop and summit. Um, they are most likely attached to IIW meetings, similar meetings like this, that Ping and other companies uh, host, as well as RSA and some of the other uh, Gartner and Forrester groups. We try and add this Open ID uh, content specifically to those meetings so that people like yourself can take a deep dive into the technology and also get an advanced look at what's in the pipeline. So again, um, the Open ID Foundation, I think as Eric began to describe, it really is a, a team of rivals, companies that have very distinct 
um, market positions, often competitive with each other, but see a need for um, investing in activities like this and uh, protocols that drive uh, interoperability. So we're very pleased with both the corporate members like Google, Ping, Facebook, Facebook, Intel, and others, as well as individual members and organizational members. Um, recently, we've been joined by Verizon and an increasing number of telco and mobile operators. So again, we invite your participation um, as individuals and as members of organizations. And thank you again for participating in this Open ID Foundation Summit.